Hi, welcome back to another episode of Commanding the Market. I am Nathan Hale, your host, and I'm joined once again by my co-host, Trent Richardson. Hello, Hale. How are you today? I'm not sure what to do with my hands. You're going kind of robotic <laughs> there or something. I'm not sure what's up there. Um, yeah, man. W- welcome back, man. Uh, we've, we've got another fun episode here. Uh, Commander mm-hmm. Legends is coming out. And now, as of the recording of this, it has, other than the few cards they spoiled early on, uh, there's been no spoilers. But we still kind of want to talk about uh, <laughs> Commander Legends and how it could impact card prices. And in particular, this week, what we're focusing on is cards that if they don't get a reprint in Commander Legends, you're going to want to pick these up. Uh, and you mm-hmm. should know in the next couple of weeks whether or not they're going to see reprint. Uh, if they don't, they could stand to uh, see some significant gains uh, over the course of the next year or so. I would also, for some of these, and we'll, we'll point out when we get there, I would watch if there's potential for a reprint. You might then bail out and sell on what you have, depending on whether it's a commanding position that you're investing in or if you're just getting a position so you have these cards while they're still affordable, depending on why you're why you're picking them up. Uh, right. I, before we go into that, though, there's a couple things I want to note. Um, first off, again, as, as we've said before, our speculations are purely for entertainment purposes. We're not trying to give you guys monetary or financial advice. Uh, these are just the kind of cards and the things we're looking at for investing in um, each week, and we want to let you in on that. Um, secondarily, yeah. we, we want to give you a recap, but just a couple. There's actually been some good gains in some of our earlier specs. Uh, we're going to highlight two of them here today. Uh, this week, in fact, um, a card we spec'd on two weeks ago, in fact, I was able to pick up copies for $6 at the time, uh, has gone up uh, $2.50 in the past week and is now sitting at ten ninety nine. and that's Ramanap Excavator. That's right. Yeah, if, you were, if you were listening and you picked it up when you were able to get copies for the $6, $7 mark, congratulations, you're a winner. Ding, ding, ding. Yay! And then the next one that went up a little bit, Omnath Locus of Rage, up nearly ten dollars to fourteen ninety nine since we spec'd it three weeks ago. Yep. So, uh, well done, Omnath. Well done. And another honorable mention um, from our previous episode: the Timber uh, Green protector. Timber guy. Timber. timber yes. Protector. Timber Protector, yes, is up about 5% today. So, um, nice. you know, something to watch. And Pretty cool. I, I, we'll be talking about another one here probably in a couple of weeks. I want to let it percolate a little. Uh, but it was a favorite pick from a recent episode if you've been watching them. Uh, and if you're able to get on them on the really cheap, you're going to be really happy shortly. Um, I know I bought a bunch, and I will be. And we'll be talking about that on a later episode, though. But for mm-hmm. now, let's let's focus on those cards to consider if they're not seeing a reprint in Commander Legends. And I'm right. gonna I'm gonna start this off here. This this one here is one I I almost specced in and wish I had back during War of the Spark because it had seen a low of about ten dollars at the time. And I, I have a couple of them, and I told myself I need to buy into it because at ten bucks it'd be a steal. And the card I'm talking about is Mox Amber. <laughs> And yeah. for those of you who've been playing the game for a while, you realize that, generally speaking, if it has the word Mox in the title, it's probably going to be worth some money. Mox yeah. Tantalite is probably the exception to that. Uh, if it's yeah. a playable Mox, and Mox Amber most certainly is a playable Mox, especially in the format we talk about here, which is Commander. You always know you're going to have access to a legendary creature that's going to be able to give you all the colors in your Commander's uh, uh Color identity, color identity all in a zero drop artifact uh it doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily ramp you easily uh like early on to help get your commander out unless you're playing with lots of legendary creatures or planeswalkers but mm-hmm. uh it, it once you have one of those in play it is super efficient uh and of course mox amber i'm sure you guys are aware you're seeing the card right now zero cost artifact tap to add one color uh, one man of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers you control. Now, this card's currently played in nearly 14,000 decks. MTG Goldfish has a mid price of 2164, while the market price is quite a bit lower, which is usually a bad indicator, at 1778. 
which for me would be an instant turn off as to why to consider this card. But I'm going to I'm going to give you guys some more details, tell you a little more about it and then tell you why I believe it is a solid spec. Assuming it doesn't see a reprint in Commander Legends. Card Kingdom has it at 19.99 with 8 in stock. Star City Games has it at 22.99 with 8 in stock. And CFB Channel Fireball has 18.99 for the price with 8 in stock. So it's in stock fairly well. And TCG mm -hmm. has near mint as low as 1775 shipped. So not too bad there. You could definitely pick those up on TCG for the cheap. Now, here's why I'm talking about this card as a spec, assuming it doesn't see a reprint here. This card's jumped $3 in the past six months. As with previous mocks in, in Magic the Gathering, they will often sit at a low in the sub-20s for a period of time post-rotation. Then, after some time, they will see huge gains. Don't believe me? Let's take a look at some historic examples here. We got Mox Opal, which sat around $15 to $20 for over two years before finally starting to jump in mid-2013, until reaching a price of over $100 for a nearly two-year period, despite reprints. Now, Chrome mm -hmm. Mox, Chrome Mox remained just under $20 for nearly a decade before finally that beginning again to spike. Was, <laughs> that also was in a different time, too, when $20 for a card was But out I mean, of at the same time, we're talking, <laughs> it didn't spike, begin to spike until 2018, which is long mm -hmm. after uh, Mox Opal started spiking. Now, Mox Opal, of course, saw huge modern play, which is a large reason why that spike occurred. Uh, right. However, it's not even legal in modern anymore. And currently you're paying, I think, $60 or 50, and no, I'm sorry, uh, 45 to $50 for a Mox Opal. I know, I know even earlier this year, I, I had people telling me it's banned in modern, it's trash, get rid of it, dump it. It'll never regain its value. And I said, well, you watch by the end of the year, it'll be a double up. At the time it was about 25, 30 bucks. Now I didn't realize it was going to see at least one reprint. Uh, in double masters yet despite that it's still nearly seen that double up from earlier in this year um, mm -hmm. Chrome Mox like I was saying was $20 under $20 for nearly a decade before it finally began to spike in 2018 2018 was when I think commander really started to make the push in the card market and affecting the price right. of cards because modern stopped being the indicator for card values and commander took over so in 2018 it jumped to an average of $75 before reprint, where it now sits at 62 market for the original Mirrodin copy. So Mox Amber here, while I don't think it's as good as Mox Opal or Mox Chrome or Chrome Mox, I do feel it has the ability to see a double up within the next year or two, assuming it dodges mm -hmm. a reprint, following the trend of the other Moxin, playable Moxin. So I see this right. as a long-term spec that could pay big if it's timed right. And that's the key. You've got to be able to, when you pick these up, you don't want to get too greedy with it if you don't want to get potentially stuck with them. Um, however, as past indicators show of both Mox Opal and Chrome Mox, the reprints did not kill their value. So mm, it's right. still very likely that even hold on to it for a longer term, it's the original printing, it could be well worth your while. Um, so th for that reason, I still hold that Mox Amber, uh, particularly because of EDH pushing the prices of cards, is a great spec, even at the $18 a, a more or less mark. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. A zero drop artifact that makes mana is just, is just bonkers. I mean, in a game where your legendary creature sits available to play at any point... I mean, it's turned on super easily in Commander, and um, I think people have finally figured out that that's where its home actually is. Um, so um, I'm super glad I got all four of my copies for around that ten dollars. Um, you know, some of them less than that because I opened them in booster packs. So you know, uh, I'm I'm super happy with it. I'm I'm happy about the current gains and. And yeah, I'm with you. I think this definitely is going to move up some uh, here at the end of the year. Uh, I just can't see this being uh, reprinted in 
in Commander Legends. Um, I think they're going to sit on it like they did with Chrome Mox because they didn't reprint Chrome Mox for the longest time. Uh, they want to yeah. see the value of the card go up because at a twenty dollar card, it's not going to excite anybody. But when it starts hitting right. that forty to sixty dollar mark, they're like, now we have reprint equity that's going to sell packs. So yep. I'm expecting that it is likely not going to see a reprint in Commander Legends, which makes me think that it's likely a good spec right now. Uh, but again, mm -hmm. if you're tentative about spending twenty, forty, sixty, eighty dollars trying to invest in several singles. Uh, wait to see if it's going to be in Commander Legends. If it's not, if you're worried about that, if it's not, I'd pull the trigger then because it's probably a safe bet it won't be until it hits at least the $35, $40 mark, which has yeah. been traditionally their target uh, for a mythic reprint in a uh, supplemental product. Not supplemental, but uh, a non-standard set. Yeah. You also have to keep in mind that dominary boxes are like skyrocketing. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, getting booster boxes of dominary right now is is not cheap, uh, and this this card will continue to reflect that as that price increases. So, um, yeah, good pick, Hale. Good job, man. I like that one. Yeah. So we got another one here, uh, a multicolored card, anguished unmaking, for one a white and a black instant. Exile, target, non-land, permanent, you lose three life. So, uh, I love this card. I've always loved any bl black-white deck. It's always kind of been my thing. Um, and to be able to exile any permanent uh, for the low, low price of three mana and three life is is just ridiculous. Oh, yeah. and, and again, Commander... Uh, this could save you from losing the game, you know, uh, yeah. easily. So um, exile coupled with instant speed, so good, so good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it obviously, it's probably one of the best removal cards printed yet by by Magic or in Magic. Yeah, it's it's definitely up there. So now we're gonna get to how many decks it's played in, which kind of surprises me because. Up until today, when I when I saw this, um, I knew it was popular. I didn't know it was thirty five thousand decks popular. That's huge. Um, oh yeah, man, that's insane. Especially on a so, two color card. Yeah, yeah, that is even crazier to me. So MTG Goldfish has it at eight dollars and eighteen cents. The mid eight seventy four market, um, which seems fine to me. Card Kingdom, eleven ninety nine with eight of them in stock. Star City Games, seven ninety nine out of stock, which uh, isn't surprising if they were if they were selling them off at seven ninety nine. Of course, they're going to sell it out. Mm -hmm. And uh, CFB, which by the way, guys, shout out to CFB lately. Channel Their Fireball, pricing yeah. has been uh, just great. I mean, their box it, you box it, we buy it promo has been allowing them to sell cards at at rock bottom prices which is yeah. i mean it's a win for, for us them. it's yeah. a win for us it's a win for them it's a win for everybody um i'm super i'm super happy for that and we are um, not sponsored by channel fireball but channel no, fireball we're not if you're sponsored listening by anybody we're sponsored by uh we're sponsored by our, wanting our to invest and, and make money in magic <laughs> So, um, and then TCG has near mint bulk as low as $7.95. <clears throat> so, um, over the past six months, this card has jumped about $3, which, again, we've seen this time and time again with a lot of EDH staples mm -hmm. because of COVID. And it's really the only format that anybody's based, able to get much play in paper with. Um, so, it makes sense. Um, but the cool thing about that is now that we've seen these prices on these cards, we, it's kind of like a mini, mini buyout, you know, like the vintage buyouts or the, or the buy list, you know, uh, craze crazes that happen. It's kind of like that. So we're never going to see it go back down to, you know, a $5 card again. It's, you assuming, know, assuming there's not massive reprints, but the nice thing about uh, this is this is from shadows yeah. of Innistrad. And barring the, uh, the the promos, uh, you know, that they'll have, uh, there's been no the printing of this card. So I do yeah. actually feel 
fairly strongly that this I'd say there's probably a 30 to 40 percent chance of this card actually seeing a reprint in Commander Legends, assuming we see 200 or so reprints in Commander Legends. And this is a guess. I don't know how many reprints there will or won't be. Um, I'm just assuming there will be a, f- a fair number of reprints. And if this is among those reprints, then yes, that could keep the price from from continuing to have its currently seen gains, much like we saw with um, <clears throat> uh, heroic uh, intervention. It kind of it kind of brought the Aether Revolt price down a bit, while being a stable about six dollar price um, from the M twenty one version. So the same thing right. could happen here with Anguish Making if it sees a reprint in Commander Legends. If it doesn't, that's when I'm saying pull the trigger, personally. Mm-hmm. That's when I say that it's a solid investment. Uh, obviously, yeah. there's always the potential for uh, in the future for this to get reprinted. But uh, <laughs> the longer the reprint is held off, I think the better chance this has to not only continue to increase in value, but to maintain value in the long term after a reprint because keep in mind this is this is before kaladesh and uh or aether revolt and uh heroic intervention so this is even Mm -hmm. older set and it was less opened as far as i'm aware yeah and 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 on this one this one seems to be easy pickings for a target for commander legends with as many decks as it's played in yeah the price point is not high enough to where they're worried about losing equity and reprint value um this is this could be like a bulk rare situation for commander legends oh i don't think which i'm totally bulk fine rare. with i think it i think at worst it would be a uh three to four dollar rare i think at worst uh even if they reprinted simply because the demand as we see with thirty five thousand decks is there plus we're in that yeah. situation we keep talking about with this year of pandemic and how many are really going to be in print how True. much are the printers hurting so how much is that going to affect the supply? Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But again, I would wait to see what's revealed before pulling the trigger on any of these cards. Unless they're just cards you right now know you want and you're getting a good deal on them. Mm-hmm. So on this next one, um, we Ooh. agree a little bit. But I, I don't know if I completely am bought in yet. You know? All right. Let me, um, let me talk about this one then. First off, yeah. it's a red card. So you know I've got to be pretty hot on it because I don't usually pick red cards. Uh, Never. The card in question is Dockside Extortionist from Commander mm-hmm. 2019. Uh, obviously, C19, when you compare it to like a standard set, much smaller supply overall. It's, it's essentially mythic. Um, sure. Even though it's a quote-unquote rare, it is essentially mythic. It's a one-off in one deck only from the commander 2019 product now it's played currently in over 21,000 decks and mtg goldfish mid is 3191 with a market of 2885 again market is less than mid which is usually a negative indicator however we've got card kingdom with a price at 3499 with currently eight in stock star city games at a price of 2999 out of stock same for Channel Fireball, twenty nine ninety nine out of stock. TCG lightly played bulk can be picked up as low as twenty five twenty nine, and that's kind of where I'm looking. You want to be picking up is sub twenty eight, sub twenty nine, and lightly played to near mint. The interesting thing is mm-hmm. the supply on this card from online sellers is pretty small. Uh, there's not yeah. a lot out there, and those who have them don't want to part with them. And usually I'm the first to part with my red cards. They're like, my red binder is really my trade binder. It's like, I don't need any of this crap. He <laughs> doesn't go in there. He's He was like, okay, I've got one, but I got four decks that want them because I have multiple decks that actually, believe it or not, even for me, have red in them. And to me, this is an <laughs> auto-include, auto-include in EDH in any deck running red uh, simply because I, I can't think of ever having played a game of EDH where there weren't at any given time after turn three or four, at least five artifacts on the table. Somebody played a soul ring, maybe even a signet. Somebody else dropped a talisman or a signet. Mana rocks are rampant. And this is an easy way to (laughs) drop this and get tons of ramp and fixing off this card. 
Plus, it's a combo card. This card alone has jumped $12 in the past six months. 12 bucks in the last six months. Um, yeah. I, I, I would not be surprised if this thing avoids a reprint for the next, let's say, year or two. I would actually not be surprised if this card gets as high as 40 or even $50 because the small supply and the high demand because of what this card can do. Right. So I think where you and I differ on this one, and I totally agree, fantastic card, totally a staple for any red deck for sure. Where we disagree, I think, though, is um, the ceiling on this possibly could be 40 um, you know, as we had discussed earlier, Teferi's Protection saw a high of 40 before it was reprinted. Uh, and, and that's just as much of white staple as this is a red staple, in my opinion. Yes, um, so that's kind of where I, you know, look at this card and compare it to. So if Teferi's Protection can hit 40, mm, okay, maybe. But then I start thinking about what red decks like to do. And red decks like to just play out their hand. So they don't need a lot of ramp, you know, which, uh, sure, they're going to play I, I, the card. I, I beg to differ on that, but. You know, but <laughs> they're going to play the card. But um, is it $40 worth of card? Mm, maybe. I think I think it's kind of at its ceiling right now. I kind of hope it's not because I bought a lot of these for this individual deck I have sitting up in the closet right now. <laughs> so I've got five or six copies of this guy. Uh, still sealed up in decks, so um, I hope it goes to forty or fifty, um, and maybe it will without a reprint. So we'll we'll see what happens on it. Um, this one is by far on the list, the most standby at the ready for, um, because if it is not spoiled in Zendikar during those last rare foil or those rare, last yeah. rare uh, spoils. spoils uh, buy them yeah. uh, because then it has potential. But I still, again, this is a pretty decent target for a reprint. I mean, it, it, it is, it's, especially it's considering up there in the price. quality. We saw them do that with Teferi's Protection and Mystery Boxes. If they do a new mm -hmm. printing of Mystery Boxes, maybe not next year, but the year after, I would not be the least bit surprised to see this card in it, uh, yep. in that ancillary spot slot or, or in the base of the deck or the set, I mean. But I, I'm trying to recall, actually, um, I'm not even sure that the reprinting affected the various protection all that much. Uh, it did not totally. I mean, it, it knocked it down about six bucks, eight bucks, you know. Yeah, so actually, not a it's huge... sitting right now. The original 2017 is sitting at thirty nine ninety nine. Oh, okay. Fair uh, enough. So it, it really no, it didn't did affect the price. All it did was stabilize <laughs> the price because... It was on a trajectory that was just nonstop. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, literally from. Uh, well, actually, it did. No, it, it did continue up um, until the reprint. Uh, so I see this card very similar to. Um, to Teferi's Protection, Dockside Extortionist. Um, mm -hmm. And they're both cases of, you know, the, the worst colors in Commander, the least played colors in Commander. Yet. In both cases, if you are running red, even if it's splash red, whatever, if red is in your deck, you're running this card, or you should want to be. Because I can never right. think of a time when you would not want to be able to have three to ten treasure tokens. Like, it just, it's the same reason um, uh, um, uh, Smothering Tithe is so good. You're getting all those treasure tokens. You'll find a use for them, guaranteed. Um, oh yeah. So yeah, I, I do feel this is a strong card, but it is a potential reprint target for Commander Legends because mm -hmm. they already know there's yeah. some equity to be had there. For but sure, I, I think it's going to dodge it, but we'll see. We'll see. I, I hope it does. I hope it does. I hope it dodges it for another year so I can sell them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So next one on the list here, we got Cabal Stronghold, the land from Dominaria that's supposed to take over Cabal Coffers. Taps for a colorless, which is pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. And then three colorless, tap it at a black mana for each basic swamp you control. 
nearly 15,000 decks on EDH Rec. MTG Goldfish has this for $3.49 on the mid, and exactly the same at the market price. Card Kingdom is $4.49 with full stock. Star City Games, $3.99. Only one in stock, though. Uh, Channel Fireball coming in hot at $3.15 with eight in stock. Uh, TCG Near Mint Bulk, you can get them for as low as $2.49. Um, but not many before the price shoots up well over the $3 range. So, um, you know, get them while you can. I will say this card has jumped up about $1.50 in the last six months, which is actually pretty interesting to me. Um, I agree that, you know, when this card came out that I was pretty excited about it. I was like, man, this is going to be a sweet kind of replacement for Cabal Coffers. Um, or addition too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and while Cabal Coffers has played in 28,000 decks, um, it's a $75 card. Now, how much better is it than Cabal Stronghold? A lot better. I mean, it's, it's, it's at least on a scale of one to 10. Well, here's the interesting thing. Like, like I would argue that Cabal, and, and this is the case in most cases, that Cabal Coffers is only better because Urborg to me, Vyogmoth exists. Without which, Cabal Coffers is arguably not as good, even in a mono black deck. Um, simply because in a mono black deck, I've I've had games where I played Cabal Coffers, didn't have Urborg, and I had three lands, and it was like sweet. My three lands tap for two mana because I'm mana screwed because I can't get more lands. Where Cabal Stronghold at least gives you that third mana that it taps for a colorless. So there is yeah, an advantage to it. I do feel that, you know, the ceiling for the capability on Cabal Coffers is higher than Cabal Stronghold because it has to be a basic swamp you control with Cabal mm -hmm. Stronghold. But the floor actually isn't that low because it still just taps your colorless. So, yeah. you know, I, I see this as a, if you're running Cabal Coffers, which is, as we said, in running 28,000 decks, I really don't see a reason why you're not also running Cabal Stronghold in the case of a mono black deck. And considering all like 20 or whatever it is, top commanders that play Cabal Coffers are all mono black commanders, which means mm -hmm. Cabal Stronghold should be an auto include in those period. Yeah. I mean, easily. but it's, it's seen, it's not quite 15,000 decks it's in, which means it's got a good, 13,000 decks to go to catch up for people to get on par, or at least at least 10,000 to get on par with where they really should be. Um, yeah. Ultimately, this is just better than a swamp, right? Oh, yeah. In a mono black deck, this is yeah. just better than a swamp. Cause, it's cause gotta be. You're not going to care with Cabal Coffers because in the end, you're probably running two or three utility lands besides, and you're going to want to have your Orber, Urborg be likely one of them. Um, mm -hmm. And that means you're going to get on average one to two less mana from this than you will from your cabal coffers. So yeah. boohoo, you tap for six, not eight terrible card, yeah. right? Um, it just, it seems again, <laughs> a bit of a no brainer in a mono black deck outside of mono black. It's questionable. Uh, but considering well, there's like, the difference between casting your overwhelming forces or not, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly um so yeah we're talking um this card is currently i think underpriced i don't expect a reprint because i don't i don't think watsy sees the the reprint value in it currently because the card price on it's not that high and considering you can pick mm -hmm. them up bulk right now for as low as 250 in your mint i think that's a solid pickup in fact uh, i'll let you guys in there will be less than what's listed here by the time you look, but there'll still be some. I'm, I'm assuming somebody else buys because I'm picking some up uh, tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, simply because I realized I did actually spec into this back in the day, but I didn't spec heavy. I, I got like six copies. I want to at least mm -hmm. double that because um, I want to have a position to be able to sell. And the current yeah. ones are mostly in decks. So I also bought a quite yeah. a few foils of it back then. Yeah, I've got I've got about ten or twelve of these things. Um, I opened more Dominaria than anything I've opened since I got back into Magic, just because it was such a 
sweet set. throwback set. Oh, I mean, man. it was so. I mean, we got so two good, cards already you know? on this list today from from Dominaria. You can tell we like it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I I feel like I'm in a pretty good position on Cabal Stronghold already. Um, I don't have it in a lot of decks because I don't have any mono black decks. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I agree with you though. I can't imagine them not printing Cabal Coffers in Commander Legends. Like, that would be a fallacy to me. Yeah, you know I what literally I mean? have... That was... Of, of all the cards this year, and they talked about the year of Commander, and they're talking about heavy reprints, the, the number one card on my list, I was like, they're going to reprint this, was actually Cabal Coffers. I was like, it's coming. Guaranteed they mm -hmm. haven't done it since the original Plane Chase. It's been, what, six years, seven years? They're definitely yeah. going to reprint this. They're going to see the price tag on the card and go, this will sell boosters. Yeah. And so far all this year, I've been completely wrong. However, we've got Commander Legends, and where this card gets played is Commander. I don't see, I don't know that it sees play anywhere else. So if it's going to show up in a set yeah, to really sell packs, doesn't. it's going to be Commander Legends. So I feel mm. pretty strong Cabal Coffers is going to see that reprint, and you won't see a card like Cabal Stronghold in Commander Legends. That's, that's my guess. I, I completely agree with that, 100%. So let's move on to another card played in a lot of mono black decks and a oh, lot yeah. of just speaking of mono black, black decks. Um, my personal favorite black card of all time, probably Dark Ritual. Phyrexian Arena. Oh dang! <laughs> Not Dark Ritual. Not Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual's fine. Dark Ritual helps me play this card on turn one, but. It does. Phyrexian you arena. Know, um, nice. I'm more fond of what I get from the arena than than what I get from the dark ritual. So, well, in anyway, my, in my own arena for deck, those of you gets that me soaring on turn one, followed by a big vampire at that turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card and you lose one life. It's an enchantment. I mean, super value. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, this was like the only other card besides howling mine that had this effect um and this and this was you. the it only card magical. that it was the only card that was one-sided um now yeah you did lose a life but i mean Whatever. man black wants who cares to lose life that's what the, what's that's what they play for if you're not losing life you're not playing black exactly so um something that may not people may not know is this is the number two overall most played black card in Commander wow. with 43,000 decks. I, I got to ask, is Demonic Tumor, Tutor number one? Um, I believe so, yeah. I, I would think so because that, that always seems the auto included when I'm in black, but but it may not be because of a price point on it, you know, so, so I'm curious. Um, let me see. I can tell you real quick. Maybe it's Dark Ritual. Maybe. <laughs> It very well could be Dark Ritual, Probably not but dark I think dark. it is Demonic Tutor. Um, it, it's okay. People can look yeah, that it up. Is That's demonic your homework tutor. assignment. Look at it. it is Demonic Tutor. Okay, no homework. It is. Yeah. He just gave you the answer. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so what surprises me is, well, I guess it doesn't really surprise me because, yes, we did just have a reprint of this card in the Mystery Boosters. Um, it's had quite a few reprints but, through the years, yet... <laughs> There's been there's been a few reprints of it through the years, but this card is so steady. I mean, yeah, TCG like market right now. Regard. You know, they keep reprinting yeah. it, but it doesn't really do much to the price. Exactly. TCG market price is ten dollars and thirty eight cents. You can get them for ten ninety nine in bulk. Card Kingdom has them for fourteen ninety nine. Uh, Star City Games has them for twelve ninety nine, but n none in stock. Completely out of stock at Star City. Channel Fireball yet again. Ten ninety nine coming in, in stock. Under, just just going underneath everybody there, right? I mean, man, they're they're doing so great. So this card did see its low of three dollars and twenty cents around the time Kaladesh came out. And this was particularly um, the uh, the the conspiracy version. I mean, yeah, I the conspiracy the version is the one we're talking about today. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's continued to climb. It's been on an upward trajectory ever since then. And even it's been printed in, in mystery boosters, and it, it, we haven't seen any kind of change in the trajectory from that either. So uh, as long as it's not printed in Commander Legends, which 
You know, as I think about it, because it's had so many reprintings and it is such a popular card, um, they certainly could print it. I mean, I wouldn't put them past it to print to print this card. Um, Before this year, I would, have said, I would have said they already reprinted it this year. There's no way they'd do that, but we've already seen multiple. Yeah, we've reprints. seen we've, we've seen the card. precedent for that. Yeah. Yeah. So I do think this is a a, a fairly high target for reprint. I I put it right around the same uh, point as we put um, anguished on making for viability mm-hmm. for reprint. Um, but again, that's why we're saying watch these cards. If they see a reprint, if they're spoiled, then you know not to pull the trigger on them. If they're not spoiled, right then is probably when you want to pull the trigger. Because other people right. are, are watching the same sort of thing and they're saying, okay, are these going to move up um, based off of are they seeing the reprint this year? Uh, so you'll need to watch the spoiler season pretty closely. And when it wraps up, that's when you need to buy. And I do suggest you sit back with some money to buy singles, not just singles for commander legends. If you're doing singles buying as opposed to bulk or, or, or box buying, or if you do both, um, that's fine. But I would reserve a little bit of money towards investments in cards that are going to work with be good investments because they weren't reprinted and they're staples in Commander like the ones we're talking about today or cards yep. that are going to be bombs with the new cards. Just have that at the ready and be ready to pull the trigger because you got to act fast. And kind of like we talked about a couple weeks ago with our system when we're looking at those, um, you know, there's there's quite a few days ago between when we shoot this and when the final edit goes up for you guys to watch. So things right. change. You got to move fast. Ferris Bueller, man. Life moves pretty fast, so you guys got to do the same. Uh, be ready for that. And if you got questions again about how we're figuring out these specs or or what how we're getting the numbers, how we look at these, again, yeah, reach out to us in the comments. Yep. So we got uh, just here. a few more here, and why don't you go ahead and take this next one? I'm a, uh, I'm a huge fan of this one, right? So yeah, I. Yeah. I uh, I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago, um, and I spec'd early into this when it was around the two to three dollar mark. And this is a, a Guardian project. It's a green and three for an enchantment. Uh, it's from Ravnica Allegiance. And whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, draw a card. Well, this is EDH outside of tokens and this doesn't trigger on tokens everything's going to have a different name nature of the beast it's it's edh so this right away just simply is a four drop enchantment that draws you a card for every creature that enters the battlefield under control non-token which uh means flicker effects are going to draw you cards um what what have you casting will draw you the cards assuming it enters the battlefield and is encountered uh, very, very solid card. Um, good card draw engine in green, which, as we know, likes to play creatures. So currently mm-hmm. it's played in 24,000 decks. And TCG Market has it at $6.18 with bulk at five ninety five. dollars Card Kingdom is out of stock at five ninety nine. dollars Star City Games has it at seven ninety nine, dollars I believe, in stock. Uh, and Channel Fireball, there they go again. In stock at five ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Now, I I I have to agree with you, Trent, uh, as we have here uh, that that I'm surprised that it's only played in twenty four thousand decks. Uh, yeah. This is this is I think personally I feel this is probably the best green card engine being an enchantment that functions similar to uh, four drop we talked about not long ago, the elf uh, beast beast whisperer. Um, yeah. but I think he's on cast or play, uh, as opposed to this one is ETB, which actually is more abusable, far more abusable than cast triggers. Plus it's right. more resilient, uh, being an enchantment. And on top of all of that, it's more splashable at only one green in the casting cost, uh, of color. Yeah. Mana. So. You know, and this thing has seen uh, since its release a steady increase uh, of about two dollars now 
up to six in climbing. It has not faltered. It's just been a steady upward climb. Um, now, without a reprint, this thing could easily get up into the ten plus dollar range. Uh, I, I would not be surprised if it dodges reprints for the next year plus that it gets there. Uh, I use this in quite a few of my decks to go infinite. Uh, well, infinite to draw out my deck and win lab man style, uh, which mm -hmm. is a very common play with this card. But even if you're not going for the combo win using this card, it's a value card draw engine in any deck running green and running creatures, which is 95% of the meta that runs green. In fact, yeah, I, I can't think of any and decks running that are not running creatures. There's probably one or two out there I don't know of. I'm sure of it. But at least 95% of the meta running green runs creatures. And this is just straight yeah. up a nice engine. Yeah, and being able to play it in like flicker decks or two lane and stuff like that is just rune kind of ridiculous. I, I mean, both of those, and it's super good with our next pick here. I mean, technically, it's super good with our next two picks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, um, yeah. Uh, so, Guardian Project. The interesting thing about it. I'm, I'm kind of surprised on two fronts. One, I'm surprised that it's only being played in 24,000 decks. Mm -hmm. Two, I'm surprised that it's still only like $6. For this effect, $6 for for Commander when you can't have more than one card of each card in a deck? I mean, why are you not playing this? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. You're on average going to draw off that card six, eight, ten cards in the course of the game. On average. Mm -hmm. And that's if you're not trying to abuse it, which I often do. Uh, when you abuse it, yeah. like I said, you can easily just combo draw your deck. Um, yeah. So just playing and, it fairly, four mana drawing you six to ten cards in the course of a game, pretty worth it. Yeah, interesting too. This card just went out of print, so um, there's something else to consider there. So I think even if this is reprinted in Commander Legends, the rebound ability, the rebound ability of this card is still really good. And even at six bucks, they're not going to downshift it to an uncommon. There's just yeah. no way it's being downshifted to an uncommon. It could be upshifted to a mythic, and if that's the case, it's going to hold its value and climb even more. I doubt they so, would. I think they'd upshift anything that's anything that's over twenty. They may consider upshifting to mythic, but I, I don't think they'll do anything. Sure. Under 20. Yeah. Uh, I, I completely so agree with you. I completely agree with you. But you know, we've seen crazier shit happen. So <laughs> I will say this next card we're going to talk about is a rare and i could see this getting not only reprinted but upshifted to mythic mm -hmm. even though it's not at the 20 dollars mark i could still see them doing it because i think it's gonna get there barring a reprint and pretty soon and that is panharmonicon yeah panharmonicon i mean twenty-seven thousand decks it's run in uh not surprising at all Tell them, what, tell them what it does, though. Pretty perfect. I mean, so it's a four-drop artifact. If an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So this is kind of like a Yarok, you know, but yeah. on yeah. an artifact, that's harder to get rid of. Um, so with Guardian Project... This is silly. <laughs> you, I mean, you draw two cards instead of one card. I mean, it's it's so good. Um, Chupacabra comes into play. You kill two creatures instead of one. Um, and the cool thing about it is it stacks. So if you have something that can make a copy of it or become a copy of it, then you can get three triggers you know so um yeah i run this as backup addition in my yark deck if you will because yeah yeah then you got two targets for them to deal with and at which point people get really flustered sure yeah so tcg market we got for eleven dollars and 16 cents uh ten dollars and 45 cents on the mid and eight dollars and 55 cents 
Bulk. Ooh. Which before we aired, I told I told you I didn't want to tell you about because I wanted <laughs> to grab them for myself. <laughs> Card Kingdom has these boys at twelve dollars and ninety nine cents, while SCG Star City Games has them for ten ninety nine, and Channel Fireball has them for mm. twelve seventy five, which is interesting. So we've been talking this whole episode about Channel Fireball and their rock bottom pricing. They know something. They know something. For them to have this priced above TCG market and, and about the same price as Card Kingdom, it makes me it's it makes me wonder why. They're obviously they're paying a premium on this card. Mm-hmm. So they have to sell it at a higher price to make their margins. It makes total sense. But why? CFB, we all know, has insider info, whether Watsi wants to tell us the truth or not. (laughs) um, Interesting. So uh, that might be an indicator that this may not be in Commander Legends. So, um, yeah, that, that is interesting, Mike. Is that a little insider info on their part? Um, if so, you guys heard it here first for whatever that's worth. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, it would be interesting. Interesting experiment, though. <laughs> so, uh, Panharmonicon saw a floor of about $2.38 just before our devastation released. But ever since then, I mean, it's just been on a, a climb to, you know, where are we at now? $11 or so. Um, it hasn't stopped. It hasn't taken a dip for a day. It's been steadily increasing about 10 cents a day ever since then. Or, I mean, two or three cents, but you got, you get I, the I idea. I want to note that time period there. It saw a floor of mm-hmm. $2.38. So it had been out for a little while. Uh, cause that was, that was eighth the revolt. And, and this was just before hour of devastation. It saw it's low at two thirty eight. Now hour of devastation was right around the time, uh, commander started to shift enough. So in popularity that it started to, um, become a determining factor in card prices. Uh, mm-hmm. for the, like I got in to playing commander, um, with a set right after hour with Ixalan. Um, Cause that's when yeah. I heard about it. Uh, I'd been out, I'd been out of magic for years and gotten back in then uh, in Ixalan. And like immediately I was like in love. I heard about, it. I was like, what? I want to play this thing. This is like, speaks to my heart here. Um, so I find it interesting that right there is where it found its floor. Just as commander I felt was starting to take command of the market, if you will. Uh, mm-hmm. So as we've seen with other cards, uh, like earlier, we were talking about Chrome Mox and Chrome Mox is really where uh, EDH is really where Chrome Mox started to shine again. And people said, oh, hey, this is fast mana and fixing potentially in my uh, EDH decks. Uh, And we saw the price go from where it sat for 10 years to more than triple that price in under two years. So it's interesting to note, and it's interesting to see that CFB, for a change of pace, it has it higher price than Star City Games and TCG Mid and Market. Uh, I'm I'm curious to see now. We gotta we gotta revisit this after we see um, uh, the reprints from Commander Legends. We'll we'll kind of revisit what our picks here as far as potential dodges for reprint um, or specs should they dodge reprint, and see if some of those that we talked about that CFB has been lower on get a reprint. And Panharmonica doesn't. That could be interesting, to say the least. Um, yeah, could be. So we got our last one here. And this one is uh, going to be our long shot of the episode. So it's not an uncommon. I think but... it's not an uncommon, but it is a long shot. This is from Hour of Devastation, which we just got done talking about. Mirage Mirror. It's an, another artifact for three. Three colorless mana. Uh, so you can pay two colorless mana, and Mirage Mirror becomes a copy of target artifact, creature, enchantment, or land until end of turn. Like um, Stronghold. 
which probably wouldn't do you much good unless you have probably unless not. it's your own cabal stronghold which you're getting six mana off of now you're getting netting 10 mana because you have to put sure. two into this but yeah yeah um well ultimately you're paying five into it right well i'm not counting the initial casting of it but yeah yeah, well, I mean, five total with Cabal Stronghold, so you gotta pay two into well, it to yeah, make it a Cabal you're Stronghold. You're essentially then. getting all that that back. If you're net six, then you become net ten with a second copy. Yeah, true, and you can surf the internet with net ten. Yeah, which is <laughs> yeah sponsorship opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <clears throat> this card is played in fourteen thousand decks, which. Doesn't really surprise me. It's a good card. I mean, it's just sweet value to be able to make a copy of any of your stuff or any of your opponent's stuff. I mean, who doesn't want to use a guy's, a guy's cradle, cradle for for a minute? You know, I mean, sounds they pretty swing good to me. With their nasty death touch commander. You block with their nasty death touch commander that you made a copy of for two. The low low price of two colorless mana. Yeah, sounds pretty good. Um, TCG Market has this for four dollars and ninety three cents, bulk price of three dollars and sixty five cents, but light played copies. Card Kingdom five ninety nine, Star City Games five ninety nine, but only one available. And Channel Fireball four dollars and twenty five cents. Um, so the coolest thing about this card that I've seen lately, and I didn't know you could do, is you can stack the triggers. So you can pay for it multiple times. And stack the triggers. Um, so, like somebody had mentioned the other day in one of the Facebook groups, we're in. Uh, if your opponent has like a patron of the Arachi, which is that six and two green big snake offering guy that's like a seven, six, six, or seven, seven, or whatever it is, and then it can tap and untap all green creatures and forests you control once per turn. It becomes super interesting on this with maybe like. A bunch of mana dorks or i mean you're untapping your force so you could potentially go infinite mana i think on this to where you 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 make a bunch of mana like let's say 10 and then you pump all 10 of it into this and so you get to make five copies of patron on the stack and as they resolve you tap it to untap all your stuff and make more mana and then it resolves, and then it becomes another copy of it, and it's the first time you've used it because it's a new copy this yeah. turn, so you can tap it again and untap your stuff and tap all your lands and float your mana and then maybe make a bunch more copies of of, of Patron on the stack and keep keep going. That sounds pretty sweet. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, if you happen to be playing against a Patron of the Urachi deck, this card seems really sweet. <laughs> I will say uh, this card, I, I specced into a while back when it was sub $2 because um, mm-hmm. uh, I really liked its effect overall. It's just a very versatile card. Uh, that's, the, that's the major plus of it. The problem I found is most of them have no longer got a home. At the time, they all had homes and decks. Now mm-hmm. very few do, which is a little unfortunate because I really like the versatility of this card. But the but I will point out that typically the decks that keep it in that I kept it in are the ones that can abuse it, regardless of what the opponents have in play. It's there to right. use it for yourself because there's lots of ways to to abuse an ability like that. Um, but you don't want to have to rely on your opponents to abuse this card. So it's while it's not necessarily right. a slot in any deck, I'll be honest, it could and it will still be good. Hands down, it will be. The problem is it ends up getting cut for more synergistic cards that you know how they're going to react in the deck. Uh, however, right. if you're a player who likes to just spice things up in their game and keep things different, unique, and interesting, just put this card in every deck, period. You will, you will be happy every time you play it, and you'll be like, oh, I can do weird, interesting things, like really mm-hmm. interesting things, the sort of things that normally in Magic... Uh, in a ran- in any casual game of magic, you're not actually going to come across because the interactions just go from one player to now I have access to four players worth of stuff of artifact creatures, enchantments, and lands. And I've I've had games with this card out where I had been entirely decked before my turn and won during my upkeep because they decked me and I had this in play mm-hmm. because I was able to copy an enchantment, recur stuff from the yard. 
and go off during my upkeep. So you know, I'm it's, curious it's on a ruling. I just thought about, you know, a ruling on this. I wonder if this is possible. Like, let's say you have, you play spark double <clears throat> and then I think spark double says when it enters the battlefield, choose a planeswalker or creature, make a copy. That's a non-legendary version of it or it becomes whatever, non-legendary version. I wonder if you have a Mirage Mirror in play and you play a Spark Double, when you put this trigger on the stack of the ETB uh, of the Spark Double and you copy, like, let's say, a a Planeswalker, can you make Mirage Mirror a copy of No, because it actually Spark enters, Spark Double enters as that card. Okay. So I, there's I never the it's state based. It, it never has a chance to be a creature before. Um, okay. But that was I, I saw you were going. I was like, it's an interesting idea because then you could pay a bunch and activate this planeswalker lots of times, essentially. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it wouldn't unfortunately work that way. However, mm -hmm. if you have a uh, a planeswalker that can become a creature, such as a Gideon or the the red the one newer Sarkon, uh, that would work. You could then yeah. copy, and each copy could then activate one activation of its loyalty activations, uh, which right. is interesting. Uh, I, that's not something I'd considered before. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of a narrow, but still an interesting concept. Yeah, so Gideon fun. Tribal Sounds should definitely fun. do this. Definitely, definitely do this. I think that's the second Gideon Tribal idea we've had on this show. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not a mono-white player, but the Gideon Tribal thing does keep coming up. Maybe there's something to it. I don't know. <laughs> hey, so. actually, for you all there out there watching, if you have a Gideon Tribal deck, I'm curious. Like, share with us your deck list. You know, talk about it. Let us know how it works or if you've tried it, if it worked, if it didn't work. I'm curious. And if you play with yeah. any of these cards, in particular Mirage Mirror, I'm curious. What has been your results? Have you had any fun interactions that – were outside the norm for gameplay or just did something that was completely unexpected. Uh, tell us about in the right. comments. We'd love to hear it. Sure would. Sure would. Well, that's all we got for today, Hill. I mean, I've had a good time. Had some good specs here. I'm super excited for Commander Legends. Oh, yeah. It's the most hyped I've been for anything all year. Um, and we've had a lot come set, out man. all year. It's our set. Even. We've got... We've got secret layers that are going to be like Walking Dead characters and stuff Ooh, that are going to be playable in Commander. And, and uh, you know, whatever. You know, <laughs> I just want to know they haven't spoiled all of them yet. Um, I wonder if there's going to be a Carl. Carl. <laughs> Carl. Carl. Maybe. Who knows? I really like The Walking Dead. I will say, though. Uh, me and my wife bounced out on that show when Glenn died. Spoiler alert! You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, if you if you didn't know that, you've, you're so far behind. You're to blame. Man. Yeah. But we uh, we didn't find out till months later that he actually didn't die. And then and then they turn around and kill him before we started before we started watching it again. And we heard that he actually died. <laughs> I was, I was like, so annoyed what? by that. I was like, why are you going to tease his death? And they go surprise. No, he isn't. And they go. Yes, he is. Although I will say his actual death, brutal, loved it, like straight out of the comics kind of death there. Like I love the comics. I, um, I love the show and the mm -hmm. comics. Um, and that is one of my favorite moments from the comic and from the show. And it's so gut wrenching. Oh, so good. Like I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. Uh, I will I will likely buy this despite my own anxiety about where this is leading, but I will probably never play the cards. This is simply me going, I am a huge fan of The Walking Dead, so I want to support it. I know it's going away soon. Uh, it won't be a thing other than spinoffs coming shortly. I will say yeah. I personally was disappointed. I'm not surprised, but I was disappointed in the direction they went that it's a part in partnership with AMC and not based around the 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 comic um i would prefer right. to see it based around the comic and the characters from the comic and the art specifically from the comic i thought that would have been really cool um i yeah. think it would have been less of a cash grab and therefore that's why watsy didn't do that because the comic's not as popular as the show uh, mm -hmm. but I, I personally 
for me as a fan of The Walking Dead, that was a miss. Um, True. I agree. Of course, we wouldn't have had Daryl then, you know. Daryl, zombie yeah. squirrel hunter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, we hope you've appreciated this uh, this most recent episode of The Walking. I am mean commanding the market intentional <laughs> uh, uh we look forward to your comments and we look forward to your watching let us know what you think um uh, and again i want to know about that gideon deck if you guys have done it, i want to know about it uh share this who should they share this with share it with your mamas your daddies your uncles your aunties your grandmas your grandpas and share it with all your friends on any any facebook groups that you have and and hey you know uh, instead of like looking at uh, the headline, why don't you click on it and watch it before you make a comment about what you don't like about it? Because you know, you might find out <laughs> something different than what you what you thought. You might have you might have thought before you before you thought it. You know, I, so I will um, say, uh, if people want, I can put very misleading. Like I I I I'm, I've been editing for a dozen years. I, I I do this for a living for a TV station. I also do graphic design. If you want, I can make thumbnails that will totally mislead you and give you total clickbait. If that's really what you're after, uh, I'd prefer you just watch and then assess for yourself and not judge a book or in this case, a video by its cover. Uh, if yeah. you got this far in the video, comment below that you don't judge a video by its cover. And I'll know <laughs> that at least some of you are getting all the way through this, but until <laughs> next time, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and trend. And keep commanding the market. Peace.